This week will be a busy one on Capitol Hill as the Senate and House work on dueling Republican tax plans. Democrats say both are bad for middle class Americans. In Texas this week, we talk with Austin Congressman Lloyd Doggett about the House tax plan and how it could impact Texans. Austin Congressman Lloyd Doggett is home for just a few days. When he and his colleagues return to the nation's capital Monday, they will have just four days to try and meet the president's request of passing a tax plan before the Thanksgiving break. Doggett is the ranking member of the House Tax Policy Subcommittee. So, Congressman, tell me first and foremost, what were your overall thoughts about the original GOP tax plan that was presented to the House? I will tell you that though I don't participate in social events at the White House because this president attacks so many of my neighbors, uh, I, uh, I went over and met with him personally and with Vice President uh, Pence. And President Trump said, I won't get anything out of this. Uh, this is all targeted toward the middle class. And uh, the next day, uh, a bill came out that uh, gave almost all the benefits to those at the top. And uh, we believe that President Trump, though we can't see his tax returns, will get over a billion dollars out of uh, reform. So it's, it's very different. It's much like the health care debate when President Trump said everybody will get coverage and it'll cost less and uh, be better. I thought, that's a plan I'm for. But it didn't turn out to be that way. It was a health plan that took away coverage from millions of people and spiked premiums. So the tax plan is similarly presented as a middle class tax break with most of the benefits going to those at the top, uh, greatly benefiting corporate America and uh, not really offering us much in the way of job growth. The GOP tax plan cuts the number of tax brackets from seven to four. The standard deduction will roughly double, which means more money for middle class families. And the child tax credit will increase from 1000 to $1,600. So tell me this, there are some benefits, if you will, for middle class families, is that right? It is claimed that middle class families will benefit from doubling the standard deduction uh, that you get on your income tax. Uh, but there are other things that are taken away for that purpose, and there really are far more benefits to the corporate side than there are to the individual side. But let me mention to you some of the things that have concerned me about individual taxes. Losing any deduction for interest on student loans. So many folks are burdened by a tremendous amount of student debt. It's a problem I've been trying to tackle in other ways. Losing any ability to deduct expenses for medical and health concerns. Over half of those are taken by people 65 and over. Uh, because we don't have good long-term care in the country, uh, many people rely on that deduction as a part uh, of a nursing home, an Alzheimer's uh, facility, or some more significant in immediate tragedy that affects a family with an accident to be able to deduct those expenses. There are many other things that are taken out. Those deductions help make up for what some call a big break for the rich. The plan repeals the estate tax and slashes corporate taxes from 35% to 20%. Overall, this bill, I think, is a bad bill. I compared it to uh, what I understand is uh, uh, President Trump's uh, tendency in the White House that when they bring out the pie for dessert, he demands two scoops of ice cream, but all those who are in attendance get one scoop. And I say this bill's a little like that. The President Trump and his buddies are getting two scoops, in fact, really three from the changes in this bill, and the American people as a whole will only get to lick the bowl and pay the bill for all the ice cream. How would this impact people in their day-to-day -day lives if this were to pass? What would people notice? Well, they would immediately notice when they pay their taxes that some of the most important deductions, like I mentioned, for student interest for medical expenses and the like would no longer be there. A uh, few of them would experience a tax increase. The tax decrease that any would get would be very modest. And what they will get over the long term is the opportunity to pay for a lot of that ice cream, to pay for a really big national debt that will squeeze our ability to invest in America.
Speaker Ryan mentioned that this is going to be so much easier for people. We're making things so simple that you can do your taxes on a form the size of a postcard. Well, you know, simplification is a good goal. Our tax system is too complex. I've introduced legislation, and this is one example of another thing they do. I've introduced legislation to strengthen the American Opportunity Tax Credit, which I uh, got added a few years ago to provide a tax credit for the cost of uh, part of the cost of tuition and and supplies to get a, a post. Uh, they uh, simplify it just like I do, but they take some of the money out of that opportunity tax credit and use it to pay for corporate tax breaks instead of investing it in people. Uh, I believe that our focus should be on investment in people and not uh, just shipping more jobs overseas with, uh, with some of the corporate tax benefits they have. This notion that corporations, some of those that are engaged in international operations, should pay nothing for investing abroad but pay a higher tax rate here in America will incentivize them to move jobs offshore. And I think that's wrong. I think it's wrong for Pfizer to pay uh, a lesser rate for its operations than people's pharmacy here in Austin or any of our community pharmacies pay for their operations. When Texas This Week continues, Congressman Doggett talks about the deficit the plan creates and his amendments to address it. Let's talk about the deficit that it would create. Sizable deficit would come with these cuts that are, are talked about being offered. And you know, that's a really, really big concern. The whole idea of adding with interest over $2 trillion to our national debt, being advanced by the same people who, when I've tried to get additional resources to prevent child abuse, uh, to assist in other programs, even relatively small amounts, they've objected and said, we want to prevent child abuse, but we just can't afford it. Uh, we've had a delay on our, on our highways and our transportation system because they weren't willing to fund those. Now they come along and say they're $2 trillion of debt, and we'll just grow out of that. $2 trillion of debt will jeopardize Social Security and Medicare and educational resources. I think our focus ought to be growing our economy, yes, here in America, but by investing in people, by recognizing the benefits of immigration reform and more, more uh, investment in education and job training. And you filed a number of amendments to address some of the things that you want to see changed in the plan. Talk to me about the most significant amendment you think you filed, the, the one that you really want to see get included. Well, there's several. I think investing in education. I tried to protect all of the various education provisions. They even eliminate a little deduction teachers get for putting uh, paying, paying for materials for their classroom. So uh, the education protection that's so important to us here, uh, preventing jobs from going offshore by charging the same rates there. And then uh, I propose to maintain the alternative minimum tax. I believe that all Americans with means have a responsibility to pay something for our national security. And the idea that uh, people will use uh, these tax laws in a way where some will pay nothing or next to nothing, I believe we need to have a minimum that we and corporations pay to contribute to the good that is America. And you all have a very aggressive deadline put forth by the president. He said he would like to be signing this by Christmas. Well, I think it is an aggressive deadline, and I think that uh, we'll prevent that happening only if more Americans get engaged in demanding uh, that uh, we not pass a tax bill that benefits just those at the top. I'd like to see us make some changes in corporate taxation. I think that would be helpful to our economy. I'd be glad to see the rate reduced uh, on corporate taxation for with borrowed money. So it ought to be paid for by closing loopholes, simplification as you mentioned, eliminating these special preferences that some corporations get so that the tax rate is fair and that would help grow our economy. All right, so busy week ahead for you. Yes, thank you so much. All right, thank you. We appreciate it. Congressman Doggett says he does expect the tax bill to pass in the House, but he's not sure what will happen to it in the Senate. That's Texas This Week. 